Well, in economic area, Malaysia is second to none, actually, because I think it has planned its economy, its industrial restructuring very well, and uh, it knows where the, uh, the future uh, markets are. Uh, you know, it's moved away from uh, agricultural base, economy and industry, to electronic to computers, to automobile, and uh, to tourism services. I think Malaysia has shown the way of how to adjust, how to adapt. A lot of us are facing what we call the middle income trap. Uh, we can't seem to get over $10,000 per head per year per capita income. Malaysia looks like it's going to make it. And um, of course, uh, Singapore and Brunei have already made it. But for all the ASEAN economies to get over that middle income trap, out of that middle income trap, we will have to adjust, we will have to restructure, we will have to move away from uh, labor intensive uh, manufacturing uh, industry to a more knowledge base and uh, knowledge and technology contents into the, the production uh, system that we have. Um, I think Malaysia has adjusted quite well. Singapore has adjusted very, very well. Uh, other countries will have to do the same. So we are challenged by this um, issue of uh, moving away among ourselves even. Uh, you know, Thailand will have to move away from uh, labor-intensive industry like textile, like uh, you know, footwear, uh, because those industries are going to go to Myanmar. Those industries are going to go to Laos, to Cambodia, to Vietnam. You can't stop them. Uh, the, 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 the diktat of globalization, uh, of integration, will move them away, where, where they are cheaper, as far as the labor is concerned, where uh, the environment is more conducive for such a labor-intensive uh, uh, industry. Uh, so Thailand has to make the adjustment. Indonesia still has the big market, the largest market. It is taking over the status of largest automobile market from Thailand very soon. Thailand now is, is a market of 850,000 units per year, but almost every household in Thailand now is having the second car, having two cars. Uh, first one is for the family, sedan, limousine. The next one is a pickup. And the population is 64 million. Indonesia is 245 million. And the market there is now 800,000. So you can see the potential in Indonesia and that is going to grow and that is going to attract a lot of investment from the region and from, from around the world uh, in automobile sector. Uh, so growth opportunity there is, is very much uh, in terms of commodities, in terms of extracting industry and in terms of just consumer markets, consumer products. Indonesia is going to be the lead. Myanmar is exciting. It's opening up, full of natural resources. The market is not much less than 60 million. And I would say a very, um, very eager to consume whenever they have a better income. And uh, it's going to be the first television set, first uh, refrigerator, first electronic fan, first air condition, first car. So the consumption pattern and intensity is going to be rather quick and fast. And once the house is in order, and looks like it's, they are getting their, their affairs together, Myanmar is going to be another exciting market of ASEAN. This is an interesting phenomenon in ASEAN. Uh, at some point, one country is going to be a star. When that country star is fading, there's another country who is moving up the horizon 
and attractive to a foreign investor. It used to be Viet used to be Thailand, Malaysia, moved to Vietnam, now Indonesia, now um, uh, Myanmar. But altogether, we hope by the year 2015, we will we'll be equally attractive, each as a boutique economy. Very special, very unique, with its own attractiveness, its own unique features, but complementary to each other and becoming a mosaic of a very, very lucrative and prosperous market for the world. Mm -hmm.